Hey everybody, how you guys doing in this whole time of quarantine? I'm quite bored, but I'm getting some things done, so I'm not too upset about it. Basically, has basically having to help my nephew basically do almost all of his schoolwork, and yeah, they're teaching him stuff that I didn't learn until later on in school, so that's very surprising. But I'm glad that he's learning it. You gotta learn it eventually. But moving on. Hope you all are doing very well. Hope you're staying safe out there. Today, we're going to look at another tabaxi miniature. This time, we I'll be showing you how I made a taba female tabaxi miniature. It's a little easy, little easy thing. Ba pretty much the only thing I did was basically do a, uh, I remodeled the face in a way, and I basically just added some clothes to it, to this hero click. but I think it came out really good. I definitely count this one as a win. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope it gives you guys some ideas. So let's roll onto the table and take a look what we got today. Okay. As usual, we start off with a hero click. This time, we are going to use this cheetah hero click you see right here. I thought it was a pretty good base. This this sculpt is a pretty good base for a start. It doesn't have that much around the feet. It's pretty easy to mount to a washer, just like I normally do. And it's even got like it's already got a pre-made tail. Her feet almost resemble the feet of a tabaxi anyway, and she has little tufts of hair uh, like uh, and fur on her arms and legs which you know that way you don't have to sculpt them later so that's already detailed it's already on it and you don't have to worry about it so that's an that's a really good thing here now i knew making the uh, the face for this uh you know making her into a tabaxi miniature uh, w would be harder so what i did was if you remember the male tabaxi from the previous one the black panther hero click that i started with i actually took some blue stuff and made a mold of his head as you can see here the this is the copy of it and it came out pretty good except for like a small detail on one of the cheeks you might be able to see it later but I, it's barely noticeable from the tabletop from so to start and add the uh to start and add the uh the new face to it as you can see here, I took her, and after stripping all the paint off of her, mounting her to my the base like I normally do, we uh, well, I I took a sharp exacto blade and I carefully wiggled the knife down and cut literally just cut her face off and a, a good portion of her hair hair because the, the hair even though the hair was really nicely sculpted, and I thought it would work well. I wasn't able to keep it intact for the face to be put in place, so we had to work. So I had to work my way around that. As you can see in this picture, I've glued it on with a bit of super glue, and I was worried about the angle. But as you can see later on, the angle of uh, the angle doesn't the angle of the face where it's slightly tilted. It's not that bad. Like it actually looks more like she's trying to find something or look under a table or something or just being very dynamic, which works very well for the mini later on. There was a bit of a gap, as you can see in the side shot here. There's a uh, gap in where the inconsistencies of the head meets. I did have to trim off a little bit of the re-sculpted faces, uh, the back part where the end of the mold was. I did trace off a little bit of that and I shaped, shaped out a little bit more of the hair and added some green stuff around it and was tr I tried my best to sculpt it on there to where it looked natural. Like it actually blended well with the mane that she, uh, that she would have basically. And I just kept basically going with these, uh, I kept basically going with the details. On some of these shots here, you'll be able to see I did add like a few little stray strands of hair on her, uh, going away from the her mane or her hair and going down uh, on her face because I just thought, you know, try something new. And it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. After I had this to a point where I was pretty happy with it, I added, I just started working on the clothes. And, uh, I didn't really have a good idea as to what to do for this miniature, so I just thought I'd go for something that would work good, like an, I don't know, an NPC or something like that, and just decided to kind of do just the, some of the clothing that I did for the uh, dancing girls that I did in the other, that I did for previously. I just gave her like the weird kind of X top thing, and yes, I know the back of the, the back of this particular top is supposed to be like a, just a, a strap across the back, but I was in the zone of like uh, I was in the zone of sculpting and I just didn't think about it so basically she has like a vest that becomes an X in the front for some reason but you know who cares it went on and it actually worked and it looked came out a lot better than I thought it was so I'm not going to worry about it on these other shots here you can see that we uh, I add a little bit of green stuff on her uh, on her wrist there to add a little bit of jewelry and to make it pretty nice 
And then I moved on to her legs. As for, for her legs, I did kind of the same as I did for the male tabax. I added a set of, like, anklets with her, with these leather anklets with metal plating, just like he has the arm, the wristbands, and the bracers, or bracers, whatever you want to call it. I did the same for her, but with her ankles and, and uh, shin guards and stuff like that. Then we added the, uh, then I added a, uh, a uh, ringlet kind of thing around the bicep of her arm. Add a little bit more jewelry and stuff, you know, make it a little nicer. And then we started moving on to the, uh, then I started moving on to the, uh, the lower half of her clothing, which I made, kind of, went with kind of like a belly dancer skirt kind of thing, since it was already kind of going that way. And I added a twisted, le twisted piece of, uh, twisted piece of green stuff to make like a ropey kind of belt, I guess you could say. If this kind of something I just went with. And I think it was nice. I did press a little gap, a little, not a little gap, a little hole with my ball stylus to uh, make a little bit of a gem top thing in the very center of it, but it came out a little bit larger than you can see in the pictures here. Well, if you, hopefully you can see in the pictures, but all, all in all, I think she looks pretty damn good. It came out a little bit better, it came out way better than I thought it would. And then, that's basically it for the construction after that. So we, uh, I take it outside, I give it the old, the old gray bomb and just, uh, get it nice and primed up. And now the painting scheme I was a bit worried about for this miniature because my original idea was to give her like a kind of a, uh, a lion-y, you know, very lion-y, uh, fur with a, I was going to make it kind of a, like, almost like brownish burgundy mane, but then again I thought about it and I basically would have made a gender bender of Simba or something, and I thought that would be a bit odd. So I decided to change it up and just go for more traditional cheetah thing, and then due to a t picture of a tiger character from Pathfinder I found, I got the inspiration for her clothing, as you can see here. And then, by sheer accident, I basically made an anthropomorphic Chitara from Thundercats. And as funny as that is, I just I thought it was the lesser of two strange directions to go with. But I, but yeah, I just went with it after that. I did my damnedest to give her the very, give her all the tabexi uh, fur details and things, very cheetah-like, and uh, then finished her off with a very thin brown wash because I learned from doing lighter colors like this that a black wash would just make them look nasty. So I did a br like a very very thin light dry like very thin light uh, uh, wash of uh, br brown, uh, one of the Citadel Browns, and I think she came out really really good. I, like I said, I think she came out really really good. She looks looks pretty nice. Very dy she looks dynamic as if she's like a. Uh, almost like she's trying to catch something. You know, it's like someone's like ducking and dodging to get away from her, and she's trying to catch him. I think she looks good. I thought she would work well for a. Uh, she worked well for a. Just like the other. Like the, the male. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> I thought. Just like the male tabaxi that I made. I'd make her kind of vague as if, you know, she could pass for a uh, an NPC, a player character. You know, she could be like a sorcerer, a sorcerer, a bard, a fighter, monk, maybe. Just, I just went in a direction where hopefully it could be used for a lot of different things. And. That's basically it for this one. It's uh, just a simple build, just like the other ones. All right, everybody, that's that, that's it. I hope you like it. It's a it's a nice simple build. I I like it. I'm pretty happy to have it in my collection. At first, you know, like normally when I convert a miniature for a D and D miniature, I you know, the whole time I'm sculpting with it, I'm fiddling with it, and I'm you know green stuff probably do doesn't really want to cooperate. I'm cursing and you know cursing at it and you know, you know being like. Uh, damn you, green stuff and tiny things in my fat fingers. <laughs> but uh, but eventually it comes out as something pretty nice. I think the I think the swearing at it helps. Like you know, just makes it makes it just that much more malleable, I guess. Or maybe I'm talking out of my ass, which is probably that one. But we're not gonna tell that one. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy to have this in my collection. Uh, I got some more stuff on the way. Hope you guys like this one. If you guys have any ideas. For things to do, suggest them down below. Or if you guys uh, come up with any, do anything like this for yourself, you can post it at the Facebook page, at the this channel's Facebook page, or you can go to the Crafters Guild, where uh, where lots of people would love to see this kind of thing. Plus, they give you plenty of ideas up there. The Guildmasters are always putting out new things, and it's just really awesome place. It's like the you could say it's like the lifeline of D and D crafting, and it's 
It's a really awesome place. There's lots of awesome people there. If you have a question, they will have like 150 different answers to the question before you can snap your fingers. And sometimes you'll even get some accidental ideas. But, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Y'all stay safe out there. Uh, wash your hands, all that diddly do. Subscribe if you like, because even though the coronavirus is attacking us in real life, YouTube is strangling us from the other end. So, yay. But, see you guys in the next one.